Good morning everyone, I'm Clem from Clem Travel Vlog. Two weeks ago, I went for a short local touring ride during a wonderful early morning weather. So I decided to record some of the nice view with my Insta360 X2 and share them with you all. I started my 56 km ride at Federation Trail in Williams Landings towards the east. Williams Landing was originally part of Rough Air Base Leverton Airfield. It only became a suburb by itself in 2008. With the rich Australian Air Force history in the area, they named it Williams Landing after Sir Richard Williams, one time Air Vice Marshal in 1935. Now, I'm crossing the intersection of Palmer's Road and Sayers Road with this nice yellow bridge of Federation Trail. There are three similar bridges on this trail which were built to promote safer crossing B zeros in the area. Before the bridge was built, we had to cross the intersection of all traffic lights and there are few incidents of cyclists being hit by the drivers who ran through the red lights. As its yellow colour is so obvious to be seen, it has become an icon in the area which is located on the meeting of three suburbs, Draganina, Leverton North and Williams Landing. After crossing this intersection, I'm in the suburb of Leverton North, a suburb that was named after the former local Leverton pastoral run during the early settlement days. This is another one of the three bridges built on Federation Trail, but instead of yellow, it is blue. This bridge was built to cross the busy Lakes Road, a road named after the former landowner, William Lake, during the early settlements. This around 23 km Federation Trail runs between Verabi River in Verabi and Muller's Road in Brooklyn, mostly along the former Heritage Lister Civo, the main R4 Civo. It was built to provide a replacement route for cyclists travelling between Geelong and Melbourne, since cycling on urban part of Princess Freeway was disallowed. If you'd like to know more about this trail, you can view one of my previous vlogs regarding Federation Trail. Would like to know a bit more about William Lake? You can also view one of my previous vlogs regarding Ross Grange Dairy Farm in Tane, which was founded by William Leake. After around 20 minutes on Federation Trail, I turned out to Doherty Road just before the third bridge. By riding on this Doherty Road, which named after William Doherty, another local pioneer in the area, I rode across Princess Freeway and entered the suburb of Altona North. This was the view of one of the parts of Kororoi Creek, one of the major water coasts of Port Phillip catchment in the western side of Melbourne. It is a roughly 52 km creek rising from Mount Kororoi at the northeast of Melton. The name Kororoi was derived from the Aboriginal language means creek on the western plain. This is Black Hawks Road, which is an important local link between Altona North and Newport. Seems like the route was believed to be named after the Black Hawk bird, but most people, even the locals, may not know. This route was actually named after Ever Black Hawks, a landowner, farmer who owned 350 acres of land in the area of today Altona North between 1850 and 1890. Meanwhile, Altona North, together with its neighboring suburb, Altona and Altona Meadows, it was believed to be named by Frederick Tecto, a German after his hometown Altona which is today a borough in Hamburg. After 15 kilometers of pedaling since the start of the ride, I arrived in Newport. On my left hand side is a local reserve known as Newport Lake Reserve, a place where you can find the old trace of quarrying in Newport, as the reserve is a bushland oasis created from a former bluestone quarry. Newport, an area used to be known as Greenwick around 1862, since the development of the area as the terminus of Geelong Melbourne Railway at 1857 and associated with the quarrying of bluestone in the 1880s. The riverbank of Maryborough River on Greenwick was established as a port, which made the name Newport came in place to replace Greenwick. This stand alone building on my left hand side, just next to Newport Railway Station. It is a famous local community art centre, provides a hub for local live music performance, art exhibition, community events and monthly artist market. This art centre, converted from the historical substation built in 1915 to supply electricity to railways until 1969. It is one of the oldest substations in the metropolitan system and also one of the largest in Melbourne, just slightly smaller than the new market substation. At around 20 kilometers, I got onto Kororoi Creek Road. 
A road that is connecting Williamstown and Leverton North and named after the nearby Cororoid Creek. This part of the road that I was currently riding is in Williamstown, a seaside suburb that used to be known as Port Harwood, named by one of the founders of Melbourne, John Batman. Eventually, it was renamed into Williamstown by Captain William Longstale after King William IV, then English monarch. Not long after riding on Kororoi Creek Road, I turned into Racecourse Road just before the railway bridge and once again crossing Kororoi Creek. This part of Kororoi Creek is very near to the mouth of the creek. You can see how low the bridge is, like touching the water surface of the creek. This is why the bridge is always flooded while raining. By crossing the creek, I'm back into the suburb of Altona. On my left hand side, this is another historical landmark which is currently known as Altona Coastal Park. It was the former home of Williamstown Racecourse between 1869 and 1940, before it was converted into army camp during World War II. This area on my right hand side was the former location of the Williamstown Racecourse Railway Station, a demolished station serving the adjacent Williamstown Racecourse between 1885 and 1950. By continuing on this route, I'll be reaching Altona Beach shortly. Altona Beach, I would say, is a hidden gem, although it is a popular beach, as most people talk about St Kilda Beach and Brighton Beach instead of Altona Beach. It is the most attractive and popular beach in Melbourne West. The calm, clean water and soft sand is a great place for seaside activities for the western suburb in Melbourne. By riding on Explanade along the beach in the early morning, it gives me some nice sea breeze with a relaxing atmosphere along the beach. The bottom line is, just enjoy the sea view while riding. Seaside, always my favourite destination, but the best moment is always short. Just after around 10 minutes of riding on Explanade, it led me into the Hobson Bay Trail, which this part is the part of the trail getting away from the seaside. With its attractive seaside view and full of historical point along the trail, Hobson Bay Trail is one of my favourite riding trail in the western suburb of Melbourne. I made an episode last year regarding this highly rated Hobson Bay Trail. By watching my introduction of this trail, you may learn why this trail is so popular. Came to this point, once you see an abandoned tram track next to the trail, which means I had arrived at another historical landmark in Altona, the Traganina Explosive Reserve, which was a circular black powder storage facilities operated between 1901 and 1962. The tram track was used by a tram to transport the black powder from the facility to the jetty during that time. Not long after the reserve, I'm crossing the Leverton Creek via this long wooden bridge rising from Raven Hall. This short creek flows through the area of former pastoral run towards Hobson Bay. Not long after crossing Leverton Creek, I rode past Traganina Park and Chitton Wetlands and arrived at Skeleton Creek Trail, a roughly 14 km trail that runs along Skeleton Creek. For some resources that I read, this creek was known as Skeleton Creek by early days surveyor John Helder Ridge, as its flows were seasonal and when dry reassembled the outline of a skeleton. This part of Skeleton Creek Trail is actually located at the border of Chetan Wetlands, a 420 hectares of lagoon created on an old salt work land. By crossing Skeleton Creek on the trail, I reached Point Coke, which was named after John Coke, a member of the crew on Captain William Hobson HMAS Red Snakes, which charted part of Port Philly Bay in 1836. Just after getting off Skeleton Creek Trail, I was at Century Lake Boulevard south of Century Lakes. Together with Century Lakes Boulevard North, it is a roughly 6.4 km circle loop surrounding the golf course and the lakes. It is a fantastic casual ride route for the locals and also one of my favourite. I love the scenery along the loop, with nice relaxing lakes, fountains, luxury home design and nature plants. South side of Century Lakes is the Point Cook Coastal Park, another park containing massive cultural and historical values. It has cultural values for the original indigenous people, who had a number of significant sites such as stone artifact sites and middens. Besides, it is also the home of rough Point Cook Air Base and Point Cook Homestead, 
while riding on this road in the middle of the coastal park, I can see the airbase through the lake. Amazingly, there's one moment I saw a light aircraft fly above me approaching its landing to the airbase. Meanwhile, the Point Cook Homestead is another historical homestead built by the famous pastoralist in 1852, Thomas Chenzai, who also later built the iconic Verbi Mansion. Leaving Point Cook Coastal Park and getting on Point Cook Road, it is about one and a half hour since I started my ride today. I'm heading south and passing Rough Point Cook Air Base. Built in 1912, this Rough Point Cook Air Base is the oldest air base in the whole Australia. It is considered as the birthplace of Royal Australian Air Force. Today, the air base is also the home of Rough Museum. Not long after passing the Rough Point Cook, I am in the famous vegetable farming area in Victoria, Verby South. With the covered land of 3,000 hectares, Verby South has around 150 vegetable farms producing lettuce, broccoli, cauliflower, fennel and artichoke. Interestingly, 70% of Australian lettuce are sourced from Verby South. It is an amazing feeling to ride through massive vegetable farms area. Always makes me feel like on a long journey bike touring at rural area. So, Verbi South, same as Verbi, the name derived from the Aboriginal language means backbone. Came to the intersection of Hackers Road and Snyder's Road. I turned left towards west on Snyder's Road towards Verbi. According to some little known history, Snyder's Road was actually named after a local farm owner, Mr. Snyder's, who demanded the Verbi Shire Council at the time to build a road to his farm, which is today Snyder's Road. Crossing Princess Highway from Snyder's Road, I'm heading northeast on my final part of my current riding route. After crossing few main intersections like Tane Road, Derrimer Road, Hoppers Lane on Princess Highway, I finally get back on Federation Trail. By riding on this trail towards northeast, it will lead me to Skeleton Creek and eventually back home. At the front, this is Skeleton Creek, which also means that this part of Federation Trail is also the upper section of Skeleton Creek Trail. By crossing under this Werribee Railway Line Bridge, I'm in the suburb of Hopper's Crossing. I remember when I first learned about the suburb name of Hopper's Crossing, I always thought it referring to the kangaroos crossing the road during the early pastoral days. Only until I start researching the history of Melbourne, I only learned that it was actually named after Elizabeth Hopper, who was the gatekeeper at the level crossing at Old Melbourne Road, which is today around Hopper's Crossing Station. Meanwhile, Skeleton Creek Trail is divided into two sections due to the intervening of Princess Freeway. If you'd like to know more about Skeleton Creek Trail, you may also view one of my previous vlogs regarding it. Not long after riding on the part of sharing between Skeleton Creek Trail and Federation Trail, I arrived at this viaduct. This viaduct is a heritage listed structure as one of the three viaducts part of the main alpha Civil. I remembered I had one friend felt funny to learn that a local landmark is a civil, but he didn't know. This heritage listed civil is not only a historical artifact, it was a major project at that time, employed more than 1,300 workers to help to solve the problem of Melbourne turning into Smelbourne because of the city's unsanitary waste disposal method, causing coral and trifold to run reef in the 1880s when the untreated waste were dumped directly into the sea and the river at that time. The project was considered as one of the biggest civil engineering projects in the world at that time. By crossing under the Waida, I am in the suburb of Traganina, which also means this is the end of my this cycling journey. 
I hope this casual cycling journey able to give you some different views and additional knowledge of places I went past. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it and I will see you on my next adventure. Goodbye. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the like, subscribe my channel and share it to everyone. Leave a comment if you have any feedback for me.